Welcome. This lesson, I'm hoping, should even be easier than the last lesson. What we're going to be doing is graphing a slope given an equation, a linear equation, in slope-intercept form. So as a reminder, we have y equals mx plus b, where the value in front of the x, that number that sits in front, is our slope which again, more specifically, is rise over run, our rate of change, rise over run. The B value here is my Y intercept, where I cross the Y axis. So what I do to graph this, it's very, very simple. I first start with the y-intercept right here. This is the point. Now remember, the y-intercept is where I cross the y-axis. So it has a x value of 0 and a y value of 6. So I'm going to come up here on the y-axis, always the vertical, never the horizontal, always the vertical. And I'm going to graph this point 6 right there. From there, I'm going to follow my slope of 4 over 1. Now remember, 4 over 1, because we treat it as a fraction, always treat, if so if they give you an integer like 4, always put it over 1. And the top number is how much I go up if it's positive. It's how much I go down if it's negative. The 1 is how much I go right if it's positive, And left if it's negative. So I go up 4 up 4 and right 1 to this point right here. And you've graphed your line. So write this down. Write down y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope, rise over run, b is your y-intercept. And then you can use that to do the rest of these problems. So again, I'm going to submit to this, uh, clear out of that for now. So again, very quickly, I realize that my y-intercept is 2, so I go to 2 on the y-axis, always the vertical, never the horizontal. And then from there, I'm going to do a positive 1 and a positive 8 slope. This number that sits in front is 1 8, so I go up 1. Top number is how much I go up. Bottom number is how much I go over, and I've graphed my line. Okay, and again, remember an integer, treat as a fraction. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to this y value of 2 on the vertical y-axis. So I go up to 2 and graph a point there. And then I'm going to follow my slope at 5 over 1. Think of it as a fraction, 5 over 1. Don't accidentally go to 5. Go all the way up 5 units. So I'm at 2. I'm going to go all the way up to 7 and over 1. Always over 1 if it's an integer. Now, I'm glad they did this one because this one has a negative slope. When it comes to negative, never ever make both 1 and 9 negative. You either make the 1 the negative or the 9 the negative. So either make it negative 1 over a positive 9 or make it a positive 1 over a negative 9. Don't ever make both negative, otherwise it's actually a positive. But I still start with my y-intercept here, this y1 value. So I'm going to come up here to 1 and graph that point. Remember, the y-intercept is always the vertical axis, never the horizontal. And then I'm going to do my slope of negative 1 ninth. Now, I would not want to do a positive 1 on top because then I'd have to go left 9. So I'm going to go down 1. So I'm using this top 1, down 1, and right 9. And again, just think of, the, think of going downhill. If you put a ball on this, is it going to roll to the right or to the left? If it rolls to the right, then it's a po or negative slope. If it rolls to the left, it's a positive slope. Okay, uh, I'm going to skip this one. You go jump up again. See another. That's the exact same problem. That's funny, and I can't even go higher. So they shouldn't get any harder than these. Again, they have a full grid now. So again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first go to this y-intercept right here, y-intercept of 1. Oh, you're going to get minus signs in here. I'm glad we're going to get to those. I'm going to go on that vertical axis up to 1. 
I'm going to follow my positive 9, positive 7 slope. So I'm going to go up 9, right 7. And I'm verifying if I went from 0 over to 7, that's over 7. And I went from 1 to 10, that's 9, right? So again, start at 6, negative 1, 8 slope. So I, I'm going to go up 1 and left 8, like this to there. I could technically go down 1 and right 8 and put it right there. It would have been just fine to go there as well. So I didn't even graph the point. But the point is, only make 1 or 8 negative, not both of them. Okay, here's a negative y-intercept. Always, always, always include this sign in your y-intercept. So I don't go to a positive 2. I go down to a negative 2. I'm going to start here. So again... Go to my y-intercept, vertical axis, and then I have a negative 8 slope. So negative 8 means I'm either going to go down 8. And remember, if it's an integer, it's always over 1. And I'm going to go positive 1, so I'm going to go right 1. I could technically go up 8 to 6 and left 1, making the 8 positive and the 1 on the bottom of the fraction negative, and I'd get the same slope. Plus, I'm going downhill, so I know I got my slope right. If you have any questions on how to do this, please bring them to class, and I will help you. But hopefully, oh, let's do one more because, oh, there's no y-intercept. Ah, what do I do with no y-intercept? I guess I cry and go to bed, right? I'm frustrated, need to take a break. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to realize it's a plus zero. If you don't see a y-intercept, start at the origin, zero, zero. So I'm going to start right here at 0, 0. So my y value is 0 on the y-axis. Now it's a negative 10 slope, negative 1 tenth, I mean. So I'm going to go down 1 and right 10. I could technically go up 1 and left 10, but I'm going downhill. So don't let it throw you if there's no y-intercept. The y-intercept then is 0. Hopefully you watched this far. And again, ooh, here's another one. There's no slope. Ah, crap, I'm glad I'm going this far. I don't see any slope. How do I graph that? Well, the slope is zero. If you get y equals negative nine, it's gonna be a horizontal line. Again, I know a y value. My y is negative nine. I'm gonna come down here to negative nine and graph this point. But now, if the slope is zero, I don't go up. I go up zero, I go down zero, and I go over as far as I want. So what you end up graphing is a horizontal line. So if you get y equals negative 9, where there's no x term, no mx, the slope is 0, and you have a horizontal line. Glad I did those two. So remember, if there's no b, start at the origin. If there's no leading x term, the slope is 0, and you have a horizontal line. Hopefully that's you catch that and you paid attention that long. But if you struggle, let me know.